More than 20 years ago, the passage of the Americans with Disabilities Act in 1990 mandated the removal of many barriers to integrated community living for people with disabilities, such as ensuring accessible transportation and public accommodations. Nearly a decade later, in the 1999 Olmstead decision, the Supreme Court ruled that services for people with disabilities must be provided in the most integrated setting possible. But despite this landmark legislation and court decision, many Americans with disabilities still do not share the opportunity to work at jobs of their choice in the communities they choose. In fact, Americans with disabilities have the highest unemployment rate of any minority group in America. Approximately 70% of the people with disabilities are unemployed, and those who are employed often work at entry-level jobs, earning below minimum wage and receiving few or no benefits. Many are channeled into sheltered workshops and other segregated work environments. Sheltered workshops separate people with disabilities from the traditional workforce. Typically in these settings, workers are assigned to jobs and earn only a fraction of what other workers are paid. Despite national laws and court rulings that promote community inclusion, national government spending still favors segregated or sheltered employment programs for many individuals with disabilities. For every dollar spent on integrated community work, four dollars are spent on segregated sheltered employment. For every person with a disability working at a job in the community, three others work in segregated or sheltered environments. But that is changing as a more integrated, inclusive approach to employment for individuals with disabilities, employment first, grows and gains momentum in many states and communities across the country. Iowa is one of several states with an employment first initiative. Employment First is based on the principles that for people with disabilities, integrated employment is the standard. Employment in the traditional workforce is the preferred option, and competitive employment is the expectation, not the exception. Iowa has many productive workers with disabilities who are actively contributing their talents, skills, and abilities in the traditional workforce. These are a few of their stories. When Mary Ann first began looking for employment, she was receiving a Social Security disability check and medical health care benefits through Medicaid. A local community rehabilitation provider, North Iowa Vocational Center, NIVIC, helped Mary Ann identify her employment interests and goals and improve her job skills. Did you interact with the residents at all? Or? Yeah. I have this one person down there and they love me. <laughs> Mary Ann was hired as a part-time housekeeper at a local nursing home. With job coaching from NIVIC, she learned the skills and competencies required for the position. If the toilet like run in or something, we can shut it off. Gradually, she decreased her need for assistance, and eventually she was able to work without any job coaching at all. Mary Ann was promoted to full-time work at the nursing home earning more money. She carefully worked her way off of Social Security disability benefits with assistance from a trained disability benefits planner. Now Mary Ann makes more money by working than she ever did when she was receiving disability benefits. Working her way off disability benefits was no small accomplishment. Only one half of one percent of Social Security disability beneficiaries ever discontinues receiving their cash benefit by working and earning wages. It has a 2010 calendar I made before. It shows you Mickey Mouse. Did you draw that? <laughs> yeah, I drawed it all. And then it has the, all the months. <laughs> oh, no. Took a lot of time. I give them away for a Christmas present sometimes. Uh, lift it up so I can see it there you go. It's connected, you know. One reason that people with disabilities hesitate to work is the fear of losing health care benefits, such as critically important health care benefits they receive through Medicaid. You know. Uh -huh. 
Mary Ann is one of 14,000 Iowans who participates in the Medicaid buy-in program called Medicaid for Employed People with Disabilities, or MEPID. Iowa's MEPID program allows for individuals with disabilities who are working to maintain Medicaid coverage through the program and still earn a livable wage. Mary Ann pays a small prorated premium to maintain her Medicaid health care coverage under the MEPID program. Mary Ann is using her earnings to buy the house she lives in and is on her way to becoming a homeowner. <laughs> I work six until two and then I go home relax <laughs> and then take a nap then I go back at my other job 6 p.m. until midnight <laughs> oh you don't get very much sleep is that difficult not really sometimes <laughs> so this house did you are you renting nope I'm buying awesome what was how did you make that decision to go ahead and buy a house I didn't want to rent no more, and then I asked my foster parents if they want to um, sell the house, and and they said they will. So you're buying it from your foster parents? Yep, on a contract thing. Cool. I pay, I don't know, almost 500 a month. I'm buying it for 52000 Mike has worked as a blackjack dealer for more than a year at a casino in Iowa. He's expected to perform at the same speed and competence level as the other employees. Mike knows he must meet employer expectations or he'll be replaced with another worker who can meet those expectations. Maybe luck time, huh? Where you guys from? Mike received an injury from a snowmobile accident a few years ago. He lives alone, independently, in a small town, just a few miles from where he works. Over time, Mike has modified his home to accommodate his disability. Even with his mobility impairment, Mike is able to drive himself to work in a van adapted for wheelchair users. Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation Services provided funding to make accommodations to the van which enables Mike to drive back and forth to work. Mike uses a social security work incentive known as impairment related work expenses, IRWI. IRWI can allow a worker with a disability to deduct some expenses related to work and disability. Mike works hard and has rewarded himself by buying a motorcycle that he's adapted to fit his needs. 14. 21, all right. When Richard was born 63 years ago with an intellectual disability, his family was told he would never be able to live or work on his own. The family was advised that he should be placed in one of the state institutions for the mentally retarded. Instead, Richard remained at home in Des Moines with his family and attended public school. Pay for tax. <laughs> you pay taxes, don't you? Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> with hard work, determination, lots of support, and a little luck, Richard found a job at a local department store. Initially, Richard's father provided job skills instruction and job coaching at the store. The rest of his family provided encouragement. Every paycheck he brought home became a celebration of his financial independence. Richard earns above minimum wage, and like the other store employees, he receives sick leave, vacation leave, and has a retirement account. The number goes right in there. There's a screen, see? Mm -hmm. Green, uh, you push the screen there, and then that's all you have to do. Richard and I used to golf all the time when we were growing up. Let Richard drive the golf cart once, and he put the uh, gas down and the steering wheel and ran right into the tree. 
Put a, right hole. put a big old dent in the cart. Luckily, um, five minutes later, the dent popped out, so we didn't have any uh, damages that we had to pay for, but it was uh, quite the experience, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He'll save his money for a month and, and go to a concert or go to a ball game. Or, um, that job has been critical because I'm not sure that those funds have, would be there otherwise. Richard just marked his 41st year of work and he's starting to plan for retirement. He'll use the money from his employee pension and his Social Security retirement benefit, the FICA payroll tax that was deducted from his paycheck for more than four decades, to fund his retirement years. There will be enough money to cover his retirement expenses and his share of the greens fees and golf cart rental expenses. According to a recent Iowa survey, more than 90% of parents of children with disabilities expect their children to grow into adults and to find work in integrated community settings, working alongside other workers with and without disabilities. These parents embrace employment first. They want community employment to be the first and primary consideration for their sons and daughters. They want them to enjoy full participation in communities that achieve the goals established by the ADA and the Olmstead decision. All Iowans should know what these parents understand, that for people with disabilities, living and working in the community are critical components for achieving the best possible quality of life.